Hello and welcome to The Tech Show and this week we're showcasing a fully customizable shifter. And the Orange Patriot makes a return. Has it though? So the Orange Patriot has returned, or has it? Because it is that sort of, well, that OG iconic winning bike, the Patriot, it's still UK made, uh, monocoque construction, um, but it's an e-bike. How do we feel about oh. this, Owen? <laughs> it is an e-bike. It kind of looks like a Patriot. Check this out on the screen. But it is an e-bike. So they're now running a Bosch Performance Line CX in there, which is new to Orange. They were, um, I believe they were Shimano only beforehand. So that's nice and new. Um, and it is a 170 millimeter E-N2B bike with mixed wheels only. And it's taking some cues from the new Switch 7 and the new Stage 7 um, in their suspension design. But it kind of looks like a Patriot. I'm going to say. Um, I think it does. I think it's a good good homage to that bike. Yeah. And, and also, I think it's like, it feels like there's lots of e-bikes which are like these shuttle bikes in terms of you can, mm. yeah, use it to shuttle downhill runs. So why not get the old school, the original <laughs> DH bike in there, the Patriot, which may or may not have won a World Cup, depending on whether Greg won sure. on one. Maybe, Maybe he was on a proto, but... It yeah. was certainly run by Team Fans Animal, know. wasn't it? So yeah, there's some there's some yeah knowledgeable people out there. Let us know down in the comments below. Did the Patriot ever win a downhill World Cup? We don't know. Yeah, Greg, maybe, maybe. if you're watching, let us maybe. know what Probably we want. Probably on a prototype that became a Patriot, if you ask Steve Jones. Um, but yeah, anyway, so the new Patriot will be a slack 63 degree head angle, uh, forward looking 76 degree seat angle, and it will be a roomy reach. So a large will be 481 millimeters for a large. Uh, like I said, and it's 165 millimeter cranks for the, all the sizes, which uh, I feel like the EM to B world is very forward thinking in this short crank scenario. So that is cool. Also in the news, very exciting, fresh from the desert, probably still got dust on actually now, is a very cool custom painted nuke proof descent rampage bike for their free ride and huck star. Uh, DJ Brandt. So yeah, you can see the pictures, it's very cool. Lots of lovely custom graphics on it. Interesting, I think it's the first time I've seen a Nuke Proof with a full Saint group set. Um, so yeah, very cool. It Thoughts is. On it? Whatever happened to white bikes, I feel like that's a retro colour now and it should totally be brought back. Uh, I loved it when the Giga came out in white for oh, the yeah. Sprung collection. And, um, well, and the, the Megawatt is white. True. So there we get more EPU, sorry fans. It's coming back, it's coming back. Um, loving the um, that he's got all his favourite um, rap artists on there. Oh god, oh. I sound really old, don't I? But he's got I this quote from the, hip -hop. the lyrics: uh, "Lions don't lose sleep over sheep." That's that's that brilliant. Is, I just thought that's I didn't realise that was a hip hop line, so it shows that I'm even more out of touch. Hoppity. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to something I'm a bit more comfortable with is the Vivo F3 shifter, which you've probably never heard of, but you should have a look if you like tech um, or if you like additive manufacturing or 3D printing to use the easier way of talking about it. Um, but basically it's this shifter, check it out on screen. There's loads of iterations. In fact, you can have it in 30,000 combinations because it is fully customizable. You can customize the reach of the lever, the shape of the lever, the grip on the surface, this, all thanks to that 3D printing um, of the paddle. And you can basically, it's made out of uh, aluminium, G5 titanium, hardened steel, stainless steel, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so only the best will do. And you can basically spec it up as you see fit. Um, you can even custom the uh, clamp that goes around your handbars That's if you perfect. want to. It's very nice. Um, it is a push-pull release, so uh, much like the Ingrid, which we saw at Bespoke. Oh, so yeah, I yeah. feel like there's a bit of a push-pull retro revival coming back. So um, interested to see what you guys think of that. Let us know down in the comments below. What have you got? I've got OG steel frame builder, mm. Curtis, from oh. back in the day. Made some really amazing dirt jumps, dirt jump bikes back in the day. 
Um, DJ bikes, I believe they're called. Mm. I'm down with the kids, you see. 4X um, as well. Is it 4X, of course. Yeah, it was 4X, yeah. yeah, yeah. I almost um, got sponsored by it, but I hated 4X. No four way. Yeah, yeah, but I, uh, I hated 4Cross, so I turned him down. No. I wish I didn't. But yeah, Devo. Anyway. Sorry. Well, he's still Carry making, making but what's cool is he's still <laughs> making stuff and they're still amazing. So last year he was at Bespoke and he's got some yeah. incredible frames. I know. And now he's got, this is good for me because I'm a bit of a fan of the gravel, the Grav Grav. <laughs> uh, so he's got a new uh, gravel bike, but it's got lots of mountain bike DNA. So it's it's got a slack head angle, it's got lots of tyre clearance, it's also got clearance for a dropper as well, which is actually really handy. If you're riding something rigid and with mm. slightly curly bars, maybe a dropper is a sensible idea. But yeah, great to see that from Curtis. Yeah, designed around a 40mm fork and putting two inch tyres in there, so it's kind of like grab MTB. Hence the name is called like Slack Jack, I think that's oh, pretty cool. Oh, that's actually. really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah super slack. <laughs> Speaking of handmade bikes, I've actually just got back from Dresden in Germany where I went to the handmade bike show Bespoked. Um, and we showed that coverage last Saturday, which you should tee up after this show if you haven't watched it already, because I'm always massively inspired by what the designers are doing there. There's so many different materials they're working with, so many ideas that they can be super reactive on. Um, and we did see that new shifter from Ingrid as well. So do check that out after this show. Uh, but for now, here's a few things that we couldn't include in that show. Here's some of the best of the rest. Run that now. I'm not EMBN here, but this is the Crossworks trip. And it's really interesting to see an e-bike here at the Handmade Bike Show. Uh, this is actually in prototype staging, but it's very close to being finished. It should be out by the end of the year, by December 2023. And the only major differences is, you can see the down tube here has been CNC machined in two parts and welded together. It's been CNC machined out of aluminium and welded to the aluminium tubes and in the finished production, this will be more of a molded piece. Uh, but there'll still be a lot of CNC machine parts on here. Now it's a 140 millimeter trail bike or perhaps an aggressive trail bike because it's a 66 degree head angle. And then you've got the Bosch Performance Line SX motor in there. So it should be reasonably lightweight for, uh, well, what is an e-bike and a handmade bike being uh, with the performance line and being aluminium. So it's interesting to see e-bikes coming through into this show. Here at Sour Bicycles, they're usually hard tails and all-terrain bikes. However, right at the back, hidden away, is this full suspension bike. Now, this is an SRD. It's effectively a development program where they try out some prototypes. So this is a prototype and what we have is a steel frame up the front triangle here. Some absolutely beautifully neat welding here. Uh, and at the back, we've actually got a CNC machined seat stay, which has come from Acto 5, and the chain stays uh, have come from Nikolai. So it's just a nice way of uh, proving that all the frame builders here are friends. They're not competitors. They all help each other out um, making their bikes and making these prototypes. So hopefully we will see a 120 millimeter down country slash cross country bike on the market in the near future. Here at Quirk Cycles, I've always admired their stainless steel road bikes. And finally, I've got a mountain bike on the stand. And this is actually the frame builder's own bike that he does bike packing on. You can see it is well loved. He's just done the uh, Torino Nice bike packing race on it. It's been to Kyrgyzstan. It's done some things and it's seen some things. And what he's done here is he's additively manufactured uh, some of the tubing or some of the um, constructions around the seat stays and the top tube from stainless steel because it is a smoother, easier metal to work with. It's more consistent when it comes to additively manufacturing or 3D printing. And it's also a very strong metal too. Uh, the rest is steel and there's also this sort of hand machined head tube that he's done here, which he's done on purpose so that he can internally route the cables, which I know is controversial with you guys, but he said he likes it. And he said that actually 90% of his customers are going for electric these days, even for bike packing. So that's an interesting note. 
This could look like quite a normal bike, but actually there's something really exciting that Reintritt are doing here. Now, this is a downcountry bike. It's 120 mil uh, and it's also steel. But what you can do with this is custom the geometry on the front triangle. You can custom the tubes, choose whatever tubes you want. You can choose whether it is welded or whether it's fillet braised. And actually, these all these parts are um, CNC machined in-house and you can actually order this as a kit and have it sent to you so that you can weld it up in your shed if you want to or you can come and join them and they will teach you how to weld or fillet braze and create your own bike for you um, but if you don't trust yourself you can get those guys to do it but uh, this is obviously just a prototype it's very very rusty and they've not painted it intentionally so that they can check it over and ride the heck out of it and make sure that nothing cracks but your one will be painted assuming you want it painted well some cool stuff there what are you saying about handmade uh, emtb How you feeling yeah about i'm there that? love yeah. it i love, love the handmade stuff i think as you mentioned <laughs> in the in the kind of like uh preview bit it's just amazing to see so many small brands like show some of the trends that are going to develop over the over mm. the next few years so yeah what what are the trends that you're excited about what are the ones that give you nightmares So this is a rewind, or is it a top mod, Owen? Um, uh, let me show you okay. on, on here. But basically, Paul's components, you're familiar with Paul's I components, am. aren't yeah. you? And you're aware that Paul's is still making some stuff right Lots now. of cool stuff, yeah, in colours too. Still, well, of course, if you're going to go down the retro vibe, you're going to have to have anodized purple. And speaking of which, there's only some anodized purple flat mount to no, post mount to flat mount adapters now. Ooh. So if you want to run mechanical pull brakes the on your fancy <laughs> on your fancy XC bike, well you can now. How do you feel about that? Quite excited. I think actually if you've got a bike that you're gonna to take to the back of beyond and you're not gonna be able to get like hydraulic spares, but you'll get a cable, if you're gonna yeah, get mechanical disc brakes. Yeah. May as well get the best. And to be honest, we did see a couple of them fitted to, well, like you say, gravel and bike packing bags at Bespoked as well. So maybe there is a market for it. Well, there certainly is because they're starting to make these adapters now. So you can have a zero millimeter or you can have up to a 20 millimeter. So that means you can run a 180 disc if you wanted to. Nice. With mechanical pull. That's with good. massive rotors. Yeah. You're into that. I'm into you? that fully. I'm not sure. Anyway, here's some uh, some stuff that our viewers have sent in. We've got some old pull stuff, just so Excellent. you can have a look, just to make this proper rewind, just good, to keep good. you happy. Yep. Um, so we've got uh, some some uh, rim brakes on an 89 Syndicon. And then nice. we've, uh, Syndicone, sorry, the Kona Syndicone. Joe Murray designed. And then Probably we've winning got... Probably winningest racer in uh, <laughs> Norba history. Good fact. Useless fact, there you go. And uh, have you got any facts for a 96 Stork? Yeah, I yeah. have got a nerdy one It's about a beautiful that. bike, Yeah, actually. no, Storks are amazing. Looking. There's a fun story. So go on, I then. Can, yeah. Tell okay, me a fun right. story. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, super fans do correct me. My understanding was that Mr. Stork, that's yeah. his surname. Marcus. Marcus Stork, Cameraman thank you. With there you knowledge. go. Marcus Stork was, like, the second biggest dealer of Kleins in the world. So he was, like, the German distributor. And... In the mid '90s, Trek went on a bit of a bit of a sort of like spending spree. Got a bit peckish. Ate up a lot of competitors, Klein included. But they're like, no, no, no. Everything's going to stay the same. It's all going to be okay. Uh, Marcus started to get a little bit worried. Bit ooh. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, like the Klein network changed, and he wasn't able to kind of like keep selling Klein. And Klein have sort of like drifted away. And there, yeah. They're there, thereabouts, but not in the kind of glory years that they once were. So Marcus took it on himself to design essentially what the, the next evolution of Kleins would be. So he did early alloy and then he's done carbon. And I feel like he's still building and still making stuff. So a lot of his early bikes had reverse uh, dropouts, which are kind of like a track dropout, but not. And that's so that the, the mech hanger is quite stiff and it doesn't snap off, but it's also, yeah, a bit fiddly to put the wheel in, but that's all because he loved Klein's. Um, so yeah. yeah, there you go. You there is a Klein vibe about it. That oversized yeah. round yeah, tube. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah. Even I know that. Yeah. And do you know what? Time stamp that as Owen's random fact. Let's yeah, make you can it chop a it stick in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's comments time from you lovely people. And last week, I believe you, sir, were talking about is less more. On yes. The subject. Yeah, we were. Yeah. Uh, so we had some comments. Um, not just about your hair. 
Um, oh, disappointing that there's not more. There were some other comments. Great. So I've got some Jay Albertrag yep. who says, I envy the simplicity and sturdiness of a seven speed downhill group set. I think mainstream bikes would benefit to going back to nine and 10 speed gears. Well, Mr. There are 10 speeds out there. I just had a Scout, Nuke Proof Scout turn up with 10 speed Shimano, brand new uh, 10 speed Dior Shimano on there. Uh, you can check out my 12 versus 10 speed gears if you want an explanation on how different it actually is. Uh, I'll leave that link in the comments below. And Dale Heffernan, no, no. Uh, hi Dale, sorry for the butchering of your name. Uh, suspension, more! He wants more, more rather than less. Yeah, he wants all the adjustments, which is apparently why he's running a formula, sus formula suspension, front and rear. Mm. Nice, a bit blingy, but very good. Uh, it's really nice to be able to swap out the compression tuning simply and uh, I'd super easily to try the different things, which is great. Mm. I, you know, I think that one of the discussions was Isaac saying that uh, he wants to you know, build on the good platform that lots of bikes have. And I was just being a bit lazy and just wanting to ride the bike. So mm. yeah, I'm good with for Dale you. Dale and Isaac, I like right. to uh, more adjust. is more. Yeah, I'm okay. a full factory gal. Sorry. No, it's not fast enough. Um, Jadias eighty nine says, after years wrenching, selling, and riding countless very lovely bikes, I've gone all the way back to rigid single speed. No clickers, no dyers, dials, and no boingers. Cameraman Jack looks disgusted. <laughs> no, that's good. Good on you. <laughs> Uh, I want to give it a go for a month. Maybe, you know, I might do a 30 day challenge on GMBN or something. Full rigid, full. Month. I think 30 Can't hours. I switched to a rigid fork kind of recently. A very nice, rigid, like tapered, lovely, mm. nice. But yeah, a couple of rides in, I'm like, no. It's just single speed bit. I mean, you're always in the wrong gear, but that's kind of okay. But mm. yeah, that's just me. Um, it's my question now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Right. Uh, Backcountry single track. Uh, is asking, he's got a Fox Factory 38 and it's fantastic, but he does miss the simplicity of the uh, Fox performance or oh. even his son's uh, Lyric R. Uh, just the kind of like set and forget versus, well, getting lost in customization. So I think, yeah, I've got a kindred spirit. It's not just me mm. that likes simplicity. No, you're right. I think the comments were pretty split between 50-50. Uh, Usually it goes one way, but it was quite split, which was nice to see. But uh, enough of that waffle. What are we looking, off, looking forward to this week? Um, this Saturday, I believe you, sir, are talking about how to make your bike last longer. Well, we all need to save pennies these days, so that's going to be a good video. Yeah, I mean, I do tell you to spend a bit of money on stuff. So it's not oh. all saving, but it's <laughs> making your bike last longer. That's okay. the key bit. So you're not just going to save. Money in the long run. I'm also spending looking forward money. to Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I'm looking forward to Richard doing a deep dive on the Manitou Meza. Mm. That's a fully adjustable um, fork, which you can change to travel on. So yeah, very is easy. it yeah. the only fork you will ever need? I guess they will have to tune in on Sunday to find out, won't they? Yeah, tune in now. Uh, but for now, thank you for watching, and if you want to stick around and join the debate in the comments below, we're talking about those bespoke bikes um, and whether the Orange Patriot actually is an Orange Patriot or not, is it? Yeah, that, yeah, of course it is. Don't lead them, let them make their own mind up. Anyway, thanks for watching.